Welcome to Wisconsin. We're going to talk about my cook kit, but we're going to do it inside. It's way too cold out here. What's going on guys? My name is Dan. I love hiking. I love backpacking. I love gear. And if you love that stuff too, would you consider subscribing to this channel? Because that's what this channel is all about. Today we're talking about my cook kit. I wanted to do it outside really bad. It is literally zero degrees and the temperature is dropping. Uh, the forecast for tomorrow is negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit and it's supposed to be 20 to 25 mile an hour winds. The next two days of my kids' school are already called off, so I, I was just like, I can't even think about cold like that. So I came into my nice warm house here, set up all the lights for you guys, set up the camera. Um, I've just got a few minutes to film before I gotta head out, but I've gotten a ton of questions about my cook kit. You know, uh, the type of pot I use, from the stove I use, what kind of fuel do I use, what kind of spoon do I use, all that stuff. And uh, the most common question I've got is about my cook pot. This is my cook kit. It came in a really nice stuff sack, the pot did. I took that stuff sack, I got rid of it, and I just used just a regular rubber band to wrap around my pot to hold it together. That's actually worked really, really well. Maybe if you have a pot that has a lid that doesn't snap on like mine does, that may not work as well for you because that lid may slide around. But in my situation, the rubber band works great. I can toss this into my food bag if there's enough room in my food bag because sometimes on longer trips, I'll take more food with me and there's not a ton of room in there. So uh, this will kind of sit off to the side in my bag. It stays together. This rubber band keeps it on there just fine. So we'll go ahead and open it up for you guys. So I use the Evernew Titanium Pasta Pot. It's a one liter pot. The reason I love this pot so much is because it gives me more than enough water to have those mountain house meals, pack of gourmet meals, whatever meals you're using, those dehydrated meals. Usually they take two cups of water. Mine holds four cups of water. So that gives me enough water to pour into the bag and it also gives me enough water for a cup of coffee or if I bring my kids with me, which often happens. I've got water for them, for whatever they're eating, for my wife, for whoever. It's called a pasta pot because it's got straining holes on the top. So I hiked with a buddy of mine who had a jet boil. He had one of those cool lids with all the holes in it and he was able to like make gourmet macaroni and cheese on the trail and I was like, I, I wanna be able to do that. So I that was what drew me to this pot. It's got a nice little hole over here so that way when the water's straining here, it does it quickly because it can bring air back into the pot so it doesn't slow down. And then it's got also the little lip here so I can pour out liquid really easily into those mountain house containers. That's like the most dangerous part when you're pouring that boiling water into your mountain house bag, packet gourmet bag, whatever, is that that water, that boiling water, you get burned on the trail, that's not fun. The big reason why I love this pot is not just for capacity. I love it because it's got the markings right inside here. I love it because it has a lid that snaps on really, really easily, really, really tightly. And the lid comes off extremely easily. If you take your finger back here and you just slightly push up, it pops right off, very easy to take off. I love it because it's got this plastic handle on the top that I can just grab and lift off really easy. I don't have to worry about burning my hands. And it's got this silicone handle. So even though titanium gets really, really hot, I can grab this and not worry about burning my hand. The bottom of the pot is a very wide base, so it'll actually cook faster. The water will boil faster because the stove, that fire, has got more area to hit, so it's more efficient and it will just cook and boil much, much quicker. I will tell you this, this pot is really expensive. It's not a cheap pot at all. It runs about $70 on Amazon and Tokes is probably for value purposes a much more reasonable price but because I backpack so much and I bring my family and I go with friends this pot just works really well for me everything that I bring fits nicely inside of this pot so you can see inside this pot I have a human gear duo spoon it comes apart it snaps together it fits easily inside of a bag it weighs really not much at all it's really, really durable. And the other thing I like about this that I don't think people talk about too much is that the edges of it are slightly concave. So you can almost use it like a knife. So if you needed to, you could actually slice 
cheese. I mean, it's not sharp enough where it's going to cut your hand by any means. But even the sides of the spoon, it's got a little bit of edges here. And it's easy to, you know, slice sausage, slice cheese, that kind of stuff. All right, we'll talk about my stove real quick. This is a BRS knockoff. I have a BRS stove, but I grabbed this one as well because I want to show you that BRS stoves are just a name. It's uh, like a, a designer of a stove. I'm pretty certain they sold the rights and the design to different manufacturers. For some reason, BRS became the popular one. This one is Fuhas. Fohas? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> This one's Fohas or something. I have no idea what the name is on this thing, but it's whatever. It's exactly the BRS stove. So the BRS stove, it's a cheap Chinese design that happened to work and people caught on to it for a couple reasons. One, it is titanium, so that sounds cool. And two, it is ridiculously lightweight. The stove is a little bit finicky, so like when you're turning in the the fuel up and down, it's not real smooth. So getting that perfect boil can sometimes be a little bit difficult because it, it's just, it's touchy is what I should say. But it's still a good stove. I've used it for about a year. This is my wife's stove and I like it, but I want something different. I'm gonna be ordering the Soto Windmaster stove. And the reason I'm doing that is because it will boil faster. It's a little bit more dependable. It's got a self ignition on there. I like that. Also, I went and just cut just a regular kitchen sponge. And I cut just maybe like an inch off the end of it. And I use this to clean out my pot if I eat in my pot, which is pretty rare. And then because titanium can be really conductive with heat. In other words, when you have a hot liquid in there, it heats up that pot really, really quickly. So when I drink my coffee in order to not burn my lips, I went out and got this Snow Peak hot lips it's just a little silicone item that just snaps on to the side of your cup or your pot and it stops that liquid from burning your lips it's just one layer of protection fun fact for you guys this is the only item i ever lost on the trail i actually lost it on my last trip when i was at pictured rocks and the fall leaves are out and because this is yellow it blended right in with the fall leaves and I've never lost an item in the, all the years I've been backpacking out on the trail one time except for this. And I just happen to have two of them because one of them is my wife's. And then one item I'm hopefully going to get rid of is this Bic lighter that I keep in my pot. Not that it's heavy, but it's just one more thing I got to bring. I do carry another backup Bic lighter in my fire kit if I need it to start a fire or whatever. But this is used to specifically just light the BRS stove that I bring. And because my Soto Windmaster that I'm going to be getting is going to have a self-igniter, I won't need this anymore. And then for the fuel that I bring, I just bring a fuel canister. I bring the smaller one. This one is 113 grams. Usually they're 110 grams. This has gotten me through four day trips with no problems whatsoever. And I'm talking cooking two to three times a day, boiling two cups of water every single time. And I've always had fuel left over even on cold trips where it's been 20 degrees outside it's always gotten me through so unless you're going on like really extended trips you know week long 10 days two weeks and you're not going to resupply at all or something like that or something crazy you're probably only going to need a fuel can this size all right before you guys take off i want to say thank you to all of the people that have subscribed to my channel I started this channel around Thanksgiving of last year. I had no idea that anybody would ever even subscribe at all. And uh, I'm just so excited to be able to be a part of this backpacking community, this YouTube community. And I have just met some great people through it. Um, every one of you guys has been just so kind and so friendly and so nice. And uh, I, I, I've never ever met nicer people than hikers. When I'm on the trail, I mean, everybody's always just so happy, I'm always willing to talk, always willing to you know, give you and share ideas and see how you're doing. So I appreciate every one of you guys. So thanks for doing that. So that was just a quick video on my cook kit. If you like this video, would you please hit that like button? Also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a ton more content waiting for you guys. I can't wait to share it with you. I've got trips planned. I've got more gear coming up to show you guys. I've got lots of tips, lots of tricks for you guys, and we will see you on the next one.